a spade of archaeologists brought to light the city of Gilgamesh, which reigned there circa 2750 BC, or even earlier according to another chronology. The archaeologists' findings echoed the very words of the Epic of Gilgamesh. Gilgamesh engraved on a stone column about his toil. Ram divided Uruk, the wall he erected, and Ianna, the pure sanctuary. Look at its outer wall, like a copper band, and then its inner wall, which no one can match. Look at the stone platform, which is ancient. Go to the wall of Uruk and walk around it. You will come across the house of Ishtar and Ianna. Museum in Baghdad a life-size marble statue of a woman's head, figure that used to be adorned with a golden headdress and eyes made of precious stones and an alabaster vase over three feet high, depicting a procession of adherents carrying gifts for a goddess. Sumer's art of no less than 5,000 years ago equaled the beauty of Greek sculpture 2,500 years later. As far back as 1854, a site called Abu Sharain, in the marshlands bordering the Persian Gulf, where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers converge, had attracted the attention of the British Museum. One of its experts, J. E. Taylor, concluded that the effort was unproductive of any crucial discoveries during preliminary excavations. He brought back some unimportant finds, some mud bricks with writing. From those bricks, two French Assyriologists concluded the site was ancient Iridu, which meant house in the faraway built and Sumer's first city. The site was only excavated methodically and continuously under the auspices of the Iraqi Directorate General of Antiquities after two world wars and the period in between, from the latest occupation stratum on top to the earliest at the bottom, the archaeologists unearthed no fewer than 17 levels above the first, they could count backward as they dug away the strata, 2500 B.C., 2800 B.C., 3000 B.C., 3500 B.C. When the excavators reached the foundations of Eridu's first temple, the date was around 4000 B.C. Below that, the archaeologists found virgin mud soil. The city's original temple was made of fired mud bricks and rested on a level, artificial platform which had been repeatedly rebuilt. The temple's central hall was rectangular, flanked on either side by a series of smaller rooms, a model of temples from millennia ago. There was a pedestal at one end, perhaps for a statue, a podium at the opposite end created an elevated area 
and at level six and seven, large quantities of fish bones mixed with ash were found, suggesting fish were offered to God there. They should not have been surprised. The temple was dedicated to the Sumerian god Ea, whose name means he whose home is waters. It was he, as his autobiography and other writings attest. Identify the person who waded ashore from the Persian Gulf at the head. Anunnaki spacemen had come to Earth from their planet in 50 groups, often depicted with outpouring streams of water. He was the legendary Oannes. Time, as explained in the preamble of the epic Atra Hasis, Ea was granted the epithet En Kai, meaning Lord of Earth. Adnapashtim Ziosudra was also alerted of the coming deluge, instructing him to build a waterproof boat and be saved. Although Aridu's discovery was unintended, it provided archaeologists with much-needed evidence to support one of Sumer's most basic myths, the coming of the Anunnaki to Earth and the establishment of their cities in pre-diluvial times. One of the early Sumerologists, Arno Poebel, revealed in 1914 the excellent contents of a tablet kept in a box cataloged CBS 10673 in the collection of the Philadelphia University Museum. This remainder of the earliest Sumerian deluge record has less than half its text preserved. It contains the bottom part of the first three columns on the obverse side, and on the reverse, it retains the upper part of columns four through six. There are a couple of chapters that relate how Zayasudra was warned about the deluge by the god Enki and instructed to build a boat, how the deluge lasted seven days and seven nights, and how the gods led by Enlil granted Zayasudra life, hence his name, he of prolonged life days. This text describes the deluge circumstances and the events that preceded it. However, the obverse columns 1 to 3 significantly expand the tale. The Eridu Genesis refers to when the Anunnaki came to Earth and settled in the Eden, a tale that some have referred to as the Eridu Genesis when the Anunnaki delivered kingship down from heaven in those early days, the text states, in column two, that five settlements of the gods were founded. The lines broken was brought down from heaven after the throne and crown of kingship were lowered from heaven. Lines broken has perfected the lines broken, lines broken started, Cities in Lines Broken named them. Their pure places were as follows. Eridu is the first of these cities. Nidumadud, the leader, received the gift. He gave the second, Bad Tibra, to Nagik. Pabalsag received the third, Larak. Utu was given the fourth. Sipar, while Sud received the fifth, Shurapak. The revelation that the Anunnaki established five settlements after they arrived on Earth, but long before the deluge, is significant. In addition to this great list of cities of the gods, four of their sites have been found and excavated by modern archaeologists. Except for Larak, whose remains have not been identified, their approximate location has been found, and Eridu, Bad Tibira, Sipar, and Shurapak have all been found. Therefore, as Sumer, its cities and its citizens have come to light, not only the deluge, but also events and places from before the deluge have become historical facts. 
As the Mesopotamian texts claim the deluge destroyed every city upon it, one might well wonder how they remained standing after the deluge. We have to lift away the curtains of time and obscurity in order to reveal the full story of the Anunnaki, those who came from heaven to earth. It will be the ancient manuscripts themselves that will tell the story. Eden's Land As southern Mesopotamia was called in ancient times, Sumer is derived from Akkadian inscriptions about the kingdom of Sumer and Akkad, a geopolitical entity formed after Sagan, one, Sharu Kin equals the righteous king, was installed as ruler of Greater Sumer, circa 2370 BC. As the kingdom of David split after David's death into the kingdoms of Judea and Israel, the northern portion was affectionately called Shamran, Little Sumer. Based on the Akkadian and Hebrew verb meaning to watch, to guard, the name Sumer signified the realm as land of the watchers or land of the guardians, the gods who watch over and safeguard humankind. The term corresponding to the ancient Egyptian word for gods, Nitiru, came from the verb NTR and meant to guard or watch over. According to Egyptian lore, the Nitiru came to Egypt from ur -ta, the ancient place, and their hieroglyphic symbol was a miner's axe. Sumer and Akkad were the only cities of the gods before the biblical Eden was called Ef-Din, home abode of the righteous ones. The term comes from the determinative din jir that preceded the god names in Sumerian. The pictographic representation depicted their rocket ships in two stages. Kingship brought down from heaven. Cities, urban centers of population, are hallmarks of advanced civilizations. Thus, the Sumerian tablet that describes the story of the first five civilizations on Earth is a record of the beginning of an advanced civilization on Earth. Agriculture and industry are specialized in cities. They have buildings, streets, and markets, develop commerce and trade, involve transportation, reading, writing, and arithmetic. The Sumerians referred to this advanced knowledge and civilization elements as Nam Lugal La, translated as kingship. Furthermore, the Sumerians claimed that kingship had been transmitted down to earth from the heavens. In Sumer and virtually everywhere else, there was a Lu Gal, literally big man translated as king. As a divine institution, kingship required that the king, to be legitimate, be chosen or anointed by the gods. Therefore, the succession of kings was meticulously recorded in king lists throughout the ancient world. We have seen that in Egypt they were arranged by dynasty, in Babylonia and Assyria, in Elam and Hatti and Persia, and the Bible with its two books of kings, they listed successive rulers detailing their reigns and sometimes a brief biographical note. The main list in Sumer, where kings ruled in many city-states, was arranged by the royal cities that served as the land's capital a post that rotated from one major city to another. The most famous and best-preserved Sumerian king list begins with the statement, when kingship was brought down from heaven, which matches the opening verses of the tale of the pre-diluvial cities of the gods quoted above. 
after thee, lines broken, of kingship, was lowered down from heaven, after the lofty headdresses and throne of kingship were lowered from heaven. In making those assertions, it should be understood that we are not merely meant to elevate kingship with divine status. A central tenet of Sumerian history and teaching was that kingship was physically, and not just figuratively, brought down to earth from the heavens. That the Anunnaki equals those who came from heaven to the earth began their civilized presence on earth in five settlements, as stated in Tablet CBS 10673. The name of the deity who made the blessings is missing from that tablet, but we can say with confidence that it was Enlil who followed Enki to earth, a detail that is acknowledged by the statement that the first of these cities, Eridu, was given to Nudimud, equals E.A. Enki. Additionally, each other god who was granted a city, the moon god Nanir, Sin, Pabalsag, equals Nirnurta, Urtu, equals Shamash, and Sud, equals the physician, Ninma was not just a high-ranking member of the Sumerian pantheon, but was related to Enlil. Enki's initial settlement, Eridu, was increased to five, then eight, full-fledged settlements upon Enlil's arrival. Many other Sumerian documents dealing with pre-diluvial events reiterate the connection between those first cities of the gods and bringing civilization to earth from the heavens. Anyone who enters the Ashmolean Museum of Art and Archaeology in Oxford, England, can see two of the critical documents. The museum dates back to 1683, when Elias Ashmole donated 12 cartloads of antique collectibles, described as Noah's Ark of Rarities. Over the centuries, the collection diversified and grew to become an official university institution. A line does not form to enter it. It does not have a Mona Lisa to attract crowds or movie makers. Two priceless archaeological finds in the museum are of utmost importance to the history of humankind and our planet, and both document the deluge, or Noah's Flood. They served as sources for Barros's writings, or maybe copies of them did. The two clay Sumerian artifacts belonging to Herbert's private collection they were catalogued as WB-62 and WB-444 by Professor Langdon in Oxford editions of Cuneiform Texts. Veld Blundell, a British journalist, explorer, and archaeologist, donated the artifacts to the museum in 1923. For a time, WB-62 looked like the usual kind of clay tablet. WB444 is a rare, extraordinary, and beautiful four-sided prism of baked clay. Figure 42. There is a Sumerian king list, which outlines how Sumer's capital was first in the city of Kish, then moved to Uruk and Ur, then to Awan, returned to Kish, moved to Hamazi, went to Uruk and then Ur, and so on finishing in Asin. The document is dated to a king named Utu Hengal, who ruled Uruk over 4,100 years ago, circa 2120 BC. According to the prism, certain kings reigned only after the deluge, when kingship was again lowered from heaven. The earliest portion of the prism names kings in five pre-diluvial cities of the gods, attributing to each ruler lengths of rule that baffle scholars. The text reads, Nam Lugal An Ta A D A Ba, 
when the kingship from heaven was lowered. Nam Lugal La Eride Kai, a king ruled Eridu. Lugal in Eridu Alulim was monarch, Mu 28,800 IA. He reigned for 28,800 years. Alalgar ruled for 36,000 years, IA. Alalgar reigned for 36,000 years. Tu Lugal ruled for 26,000 years. Two kings. The Mu Bai is 64,800 IBA. During its 64,800 year reign, it ruled, continuing in translation only. A decision was made to drop Iridu. Kingship was carried to Bad Tibira. Enme and Lu Anna ruled in Bad Tibira for 43,200 years. Enme and Gal Anna ruled for 28,800 years. Dumusi, a shepherd, ruled for 36,000 years. Three kings ruled for 108,000 years. Bad Tibera was dropped, but kingship to Larak was carried. En Sipazi, Anna, reigned in Larak for 28,800 years. One king reigned for 28,800 years. Larak has been discarded. The kingship to Sipar was carried. En Mendur in Sipar. Anna was king for 21,000 years. One king ruled its 21,000 years. The company dropped Sipar. Shurupak's kingship was carried. Ubar Tutu ruled Shurupak for 18,600 years. They were five cities. Eight kings ruled for 241,200 years. They were swept away by the flood. After the flood had swept over the area, when kingship was lowered again from heaven, it was in Kish. This prism contains the very sar units of Berosus. WB444 is first lines contain one fundamental error. The lengths of the rule are listed in SAR units, using the numerical sign for 3600. Alulim's power was not 21,800 years in Eridu, but rather eight SARs. Aludgar's was 36,000 years, not 10 SARs. And so on to the end of the pre-Diluvian era. The Tsar unit of government applied only to pre-Diluvial rulers in the cities of the gods. The division of count changes to regular numbers in the post-Diluvial portion of the document. The list of rulers identifies the same first five cities in the same order as does tablet CBS-1 0673. But rather than naming the gods whose cult center each town was, WB444 lists the kings, administrators of each city. As a significant study by William W. Hallow, the antediluvial cities, has established both documents provide a definitive account of the start of civilization, the kingship, on earth beginning at Iridu and ending at Shurapak at the time of the deluge. WB444 does not mention Ziusudra, the hero of the deluge, among its eight kings, with cities and reigns that range from the start of Iridu to the diluvial finale at Shurapak, its list ends at Ubar Tutu and not at Ziusudra. As stated in Tablet 11 of the Epic of Gilgamesh, Utnapishtim, Ziasudra, 
was the last ruler of Shurapak and the son of Ubar Tutu. There is no doubt from various discoveries of other complete or fragmented tablets, such as UCBC 9 1819, Ni 8195, Baghdad 63095, that a canonized text regarding pre diluvial cities and their rulers existed, from which copies were made, and during such copying, errors and omissions occurred. A little-known tablet is kept in a private collection at the Carpellis Manuscript Library Museum in Santa Barbara, California. Although it too names eight kings in five cities, the different reign lengths add up to ten great sars and one sar plus six hundred times five, which equals only 222,600 years. Zia Sudra's glaring omissions are addressed in another table, British Museum K11624, Dynastic Chronicle, as some scholars call it, lists nine kings in the first five cities, again with somewhat different Sar numbers. Alulium 10 equals 36,000. Alulgar 3 equals 10,800 instead of 28,800, and so on, but correctly ending with two kings in Shuro Pak. Ubar Tutu with eight sars equals 28,800 years, and Zia Sudra with 18 sars equals 64,800 years. After the total of five cities, nine kings, 98 sars, equals 352,800 years. On the previous tablet, this tablet adds some brief explanations for the deluge, including Enlil disliked humankind. The clamor they made kept him awake. The Ashmolean Museum's tablet, WB62, gives the most accurate list of ten rulers, matching Berosus. The Sar units for the pre-diluvial period are the same as Berosus, although with different reigns periods. It differs from WB444 in that it includes not five, but six cities, and adds Larsa and its two rulers to the pre-diluvial list, ending correctly with Ziosudra at deluge time. Based on the comparison of WB-62 with the Greek fragments of Berosus, converting Sars, Saros, into numbers of years, it appears that this version is his principal source. Alorus, 36,000 Alulium, 67,200 72,000 Al-Algars 10,800, Ala Paros. Emelon, 46,800. Enkidunu, 72,000. Lines Broken, Alima, 21,600. And Amennon, 43,200. Megalaros, 64,800. Dumuzi, 28,800. Danos, 36,000. Enmenluana, 21,600. Eudirachos, 64,800. Ensipziana, 36,000. 72,000. Enmedrana, 36,000. Amem Piscinos, 36,000. Amen Piscinos, approximately 28,800. Soccer Lams, 28,800. Ardates, or Obates, 28,800. Sisuthros, 64,800. Ziosudra, 36,000.
10 kings, 120 shars, equals 456,000. 10 rulers, 456,000. Which of the various tablets we reviewed is the most accurate? There are 10 pre-diluvial rulers in six cities of the gods listed in the list that ends in Shurapak and contains Ziusudra and his father-slash-predecessor. Although the Bible lists 10 pre-diluvial patriarchs, they were all descendants of Adam through his grandson Enoch, Hebrew for man, and were not considered gods, add support to the ten rulers count as being correct. However, the various tablets all agree that those successive rulers reigned between the time when kingship was handed down from heaven until the deluge swept it away. Thus, if we could determine when the flood occurred, we could determine the date when the Anunnaki Anunnaki had arrived on earth. Since Berusus reported the most reliable version, we also arrive at his figure of 120 SARS, equaling 432,000 years, as the correct cumulative total of the pre-diluvial reigns. That is, the time that had transpired from when kingship was brought down from heaven until the deluge.